Hey, Chris here with the fifth video in the Bosch tutorial series. In the last video, we used Bosch to deploy Nginx. And in this video, I want to quickly run through some of the Bosch CLI commands we can use to interact with that deployment. So before I dive into the CLI, let me show you where you can find the reference to these commands on Bosch.io. So if you're on Bosch.io, go to Guides, then using the CLI on the left hand side, then commands. And then on the right hand side, you'll find deployments. So in here, you'll find all the commands you can do on deployments, basically. So let's dive into the first one, which is the command deployments. So let me show you that. Porsche Manage tutorial, and then we'll use the command deployments. And it shows two deployments in this case. Uh, the deployment we did last time called Nginx. And in the meantime, I also did another deployment. I deployed Nginx again with the different deployment name, just to show you what it looks like if there are more than one deployment on the Bosch director. So if you want to interact with any of these deployments, we always need to specify the deployment name on the command line with dash D. So dash D Nginx in this case. And then we can do different commands to interact with it. Um, so let's start with one I regularly use, which is tasks. And this will show you all the active tasks currently running on this deployment. And as you can see, there are no tasks running. If you add dash dash reset to this command, it will show you commands that recently ran on this deployment. As you can see, there were three tasks run and we can also get details on each of those tasks. So let's say we want to use, I want to get some more details on task with ID number seven. We can run task. So let's remove the S and then number seven. And it will show us the screen we also saw during the deployment of the, uh, this deployment. So it's the exact same output we saw back then. We can get even more details if we add dash dash debug. And that just spits out all the logs. If we add the actual ID, spits out all the logs that were generated during the deployment of this, well, deployment. Um, so if anything goes wrong during deployment, you'll probably find the cause of the problem in here. There are also other ways to get logging in a more manageable way than just this bunch of logs right here. And we'll go into that in a different video probably. So now what if you want to see um, the contents of the deployment? So I don't want to see the tasks. I don't want to see any debug logging. I just want to see what's actually deployed. So we can use the command instances for that. And it will show us all the instances that were deployed in this specific deployment. So what's an instance? Um, so to show you that, let's go back to the manifest we use to deploy Nginx. So nginx.yaml. And as you can see, there is instance groups and we have one instance group in this case. It's called Nginx. So that's the instance group. And then inside the instance group, we specified that we want to have one instance. So let's go back to the CLI. We see the instance group, Nginx, and we see an ID for this particular instance. If we deployed two instances in this instance group, you would see two lines here, and then the instance group would be the same, it would be Nginx, uh, but they would have a different ID. We can also see the IP address in here. And if we want to see a bit more information about the instances, we can add dash dash vitals to the command. It doesn't really fit on the screen, but as you can see, it shows us um, like the average CPU usage, the disk usage and things like that. So really the vitals of, of this instance, uh, which is nice because you can get a quick overview of how your deployment is doing. So then there was another command, which is really very similar to instances and that's called VMs. And it shows almost the same things, um, it's just from a different perspective. So instances shows you the deployed instances. An instance is a, it's a Bosch construct. A VM is a construct on the underlying infrastructure. So the VMs command gives you an overview of all the virtual machines which are deployed. Um, each virtual machine just corresponds to an instance. So it's, it's, it's a one-on-one -on -one mapping. Um, 
And the nice thing is it also shows you the VM CID here. And CID is for Cloud ID. Um, so this name, this ID, is actually the name of the virtual machine, which we'll see in the IS layer. In my case, that's vSphere. So I'll copy this ID and then I'll open my vSphere console. And I'll do a search for that virtual machine. So let's paste that in there and do a search and found it. And as you can see, that's the actual name of the virtual machine. So let me drag this out a little bit. So that's, that's the name of the virtual machine. So no more very special naming conventions for your virtual machines. It's all just a UUID. It's just VM dash and then a UUID. That's it. You shouldn't bother about naming your virtual machines any, anything else, basically. It's, as long as it's a unique name, it's fine. And that's the philosophy that Bosch follows. It's just a generated UUID and that's the name of your virtual machine. Now, Bosch does add some custom attributes to the virtual machine. So we can see those over here. So we can see this virtual machine is part of the Nginx deployment and it's deployed by the tutorial director. Uh, it also shows the ID of the instance. So the instance ID and the VM ID is not necessarily the same. Instance ID is internal to, uh, to Bosch and the name of the VM is internal to the, to the IS basically. So this ID is the ID of the instance. So if we go back and we scroll back a little bit to the instances command, you'll see this this ID and that's the same as this ID over here. So that's how you can see which machine is what. It also shows you the, the index group, uh, the instance group and the index. So this is the first machine in this instance group. So that's index zero basically. All right, so that's it for the virtual machines. Um, now let's say we want to log into this virtual machine. Uh, so we have this virtual machine over here and we want to SSH into it. And we don't know any credentials for this virtual machine. Bosch all generates that on the fly, basically. Um, but Bosch still gives us a way to SSH into it without knowing the username and password for this machine. So we use Nginx deployment, and then we want to SSH into there. And I want to SSH into the Nginx instance group. And in this case, this instance group just has one virtual machine. Um, so I just need to specify the instance group and it will connect just fine to that one single virtual machine. If you happen to have more than one virtual machine inside an instance group, you also need to specify the ID for the instance you want to connect to. So you have to add a slash and the whole ID. So I just copy paste that from here to there. But for now, just Nginx is sufficient to SSH into the machine. And there we go. Uh, the Boris agent handles all the, the key exchange. So it just locks us in and here we are. And if you want to become root, just type sudo this i and we're an interactive root prompt. So let's explore this a little bit. Um, because a Linux machine deployed by Bosch is a little bit different from other Linux machines you might be familiar with. Um, and the first thing you need to know that everything Bosch related is in slash var slash vcap. So let's take a look in there. And it shows you a bunch of, of subdirectories. We'll see jobs. There's monit, and then there's packages. Um, so all these are very Bosch specific. Um, and we'll probably go into this deeper in a later video when we are going to create releases. Um, so just for now, I'll show you where you can find the logging of all the processes. So we go into slash uh, sys and then log. And it will show you a folder for each job that's running on this machine. In this case, just one, the Nginx. And these are all the logs that Nginx generates and stores in this folder. Um, so let's take a look at some of them. Um, there's error.log. So this is an example of one of the logs of Nginx. This is where it logs all its, uh, all its error output. I won't go into all the details of this specific log file. Um, and then there is a pre-start log file, for example, which logs it std out, which is empty. So that's good. Um, so this is just to show you that this is where you find all the logging for the different jobs running on, on, the, on this machine. So something else that you need to know uh, when you're troubleshooting um, Bosch deployments is the monit command. So monit is what monitors all the processes running on the machine. And we can use the command monit summary 
to see all the running and maybe not running processes if you're troubleshooting. So in this case we have Nginx, the only process defined, and it's running. And we can also use Monit to restart processes. So this will restart Nginx. So you probably won't be using this Monit command on a daily basis, but it's very nice to have when you're troubleshooting. So let's log out. I'll just press Ctrl D and Ctrl D again, and we're back to my own command prompt. Um, there's two more commands I want to show you. Um, so the first one is restart uh, nginx, and then we can do a restart of an instance or an instance group. And what this does is it actually doesn't restart the operating system, it restarts all the processes on all the instances, which I specified on the command line. In this case, on the Nginx instance, it will restart all the processes, which as we saw previously, is it's just one process, it's the Nginx process. So it doesn't do a, an OS restart or a restart on the virtual machine level. It's just um, a restart of all the processes on the machine. So it takes a little bit of time and there we go, that's it. So it took us 32 seconds to restart the process on this machine. Again, this is nice for troubleshooting if anything crashes somehow. Um, it's, it's a quick way to restart all processes on one, uh, one instance. Another command you might need when you're troubleshooting is recreate. And the recreate command actually recreates the whole instance. So let's do that for now. Recreate Nginx. And we'll kick that off. And we'll move over to the vSphere console. And we'll see what happens. So you see that it's actually powering off the virtual machine. Then it's detaching some stuff, detaching disks. And eventually it will delete the virtual machine. And then it will just redeploy it. It will redeploy the virtual machine and if you're looking here at the command line, it doesn't show actually that it's redeploying the virtual machine. It's just telling you it's updating the instance. And in the background, it deletes the whole machine, redeploys the machine from scratch, installs the software, and if there's any persistent data, it will reattach that afterwards. Um, this Nginx machine won't have any persistent data, uh, so we want to see that here. Um, as we look at vCenter, it's already powering on and it's probably installing software by now. Okay, so this will take a little bit of time. We'll speed this up in the video. And it's done. So it deleted the whole virtual machine, recreated it, installed the software, and now it's back up and running like nothing happened. And I can prove that. I can just show you from my browser that it's still up and running. So you see it still has the same IP address. It did have before. So I'll copy that, uh, put it in my browser, and there we go. It's back up and running. So that's it for this video. These are all the commands I want to share with you today. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the CLI, just head over to uh, Bosch.io and find the CLI commands there and, well, go explore Bosch. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or find me on Twitter. If you like this, please click like, click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.